access to x-ray machines. But the dentist that doesn't take x-rays of the jaw joint, I don't think can really say that he thoroughly examined the jaw joint. And then you also have a, a, a machine, don't you, that checks for vibrations in the That's joint? That's right, called the joint vibration analysis. And that checks to see how serious that problem is. How serious is that disc out of position? Are we going towards clicking to jaw locking? To crepitus, because you should really noises. have no vibration, noise. No the vibration is the the movement's not smooth That's in your right. jaw joint. That's right. Okay, so back to why do you think mo most people don't go get checked? Why do they continue to go down the path of either pain management or suffering through it? Um, taking, I have friends that take, you know, 18 aspirins a day. Mm -hmm. I don't have as allowed. I think our medical schools and dental schools could do a little better job of educating us in terms of TMJ. I think, I, think, I think we're so busy learning how to fix teeth and fix gums that, we've, that that part has been neglected in, in some of the dental schools. Some of the dental schools are getting a little better at it now, some of the medical schools, but I just find that the patients that come to me, they're, it's just like the lights go on. We spend about an hour with each new patient explaining what's going on, showing them some of these videos, taking x-ray of their joint, doing a history, finding do the joint vibration analysis, and they're amazed. They said, you mean that this actually can be fixed? I had no idea that, that these pain problems, these neck problems, could be coming from the jaw joint. Nobody ever mentioned to me before. And so they're amazed. And, and some people start to cry. They say, do you mean to say that I've been everywhere? I've been to acupuncturists and chiropractors and neurosurgeons and, and neurologists. And they are all excellent at helping the patient if that's the problem. For instance, if you have a neck problem, and it's not coming from the jaw, because some problems in the neck come from the jaw, a chiropractor is someone you definitely want to see. Right. And, and neurologists, if you've got a tumor, you definitely want to see a neurologist because if the pain is coming from a tumor, you definitely want to get that seen too. But, but let's, say I had a, let's say I had ringing in my ears, and I went to a, an ENT. Right. And he looked in there. Obviously, if I have an infection, he's going to give me antibiotics. Right. He looks in there, I don't have an infection. I just have ringing in my ears. Now what? Well, some ENTs understand that that could be TMJ, and we'll refer to a dentist that does TMJ. So you work, and you personally work hand in hand with other doctors in oh your market. Absolutely, you have to, you have to. I mean, other healthcare professionals can help with this too. But if you got a structural problem, you need a dentist to fix it. If you got a dislocated jaw, you come to a dentist. Another quick break. When we come back, I have a few more questions, and then I want to get into the results that you can achieve and how long do they last. We're in studio with Dr. Rondeau discussing TMJ. We'll be right back. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, sound like having some behavioral problems. I guess that reward system isn't working. Well, the timeouts weren't either. Now, you know, parents do find that timeouts aren't... See? Well, you're just too lenient. Well, you're too strict. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. When adults don't have the answers, they can feel as frustrated as kids. ConnectForKids.org has thousands of resources for helping kids in your community. ConnectForKids.org, guidance for grown-ups. Welcome back. We're in studio with Dr. Rondo discussing TMJ. How much time in continuing education do you think you put in to get to this point learning? Oh, thousands and thousands of hours. Thousands of hours. But I like it. I enjoy it. The more I learn, the more I feel I can help more people. The more I learn, the more I feel I can help more dentists learn to help more people. So I, I like this. Do you find that because you are involved with the other medical professionals in the community you're in, do you find that their awareness of, of what you're able to do as a whole becomes better? I mean, as time goes on, do you see more and more people referring you patients? Yes. Yes, we're getting very busy. So what would, I'm at home, what, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm watching, I'm listening, what would I look for? What would be signs or symptoms that I might have TMJ? Well, first of all, when you open and close, it should be noiseless. If you open and close, there should be no clicking, no noise. Secondly, you should be able to open. You should be able to get three fingers in. Into your mouth? In your mouth, like a Big Mac. Okay. You've got to be a Big Mac supporter there. And if okay. you can't open your mouth that far, that's a pretty good sign? Then you, that's another sign that you have a problem. Okay, so that, those are signs. Now, the symptoms we've talked about. The, the, the dizziness, the headaches, the neck aches, the ear aches, the ring in the ears, all of those things are, are symptoms. What about, and I know this sounds, 
what about if I chew gum or I do it and my jaw gets really sore? Then that's a sign that you've probably got a problem. You it know, should. Because TMJ patients can't chew gum. They can't eat hard foods. That's a good point. They can't eat hard foods. Any chewy foods, hard foods, steak, anything like that, they can't eat it. So they have to go with soft foods. So if they don't eat the hard foods, and, I, and, and again, I'm, if you're not chewing meat, if you're not eating hard, if you're eating nothing but soft, squishy food, I would have to think that physically your body's probably not getting the nourishment it really needs. I think that's probably true. Which leads to other ailments. Yeah. So what, what other signs or symptoms? Those are, those are the main ones. And uh, apart from the pain, the headaches are number one. I mean, those, and, and, and a lot of people think that it's other things. Stress. What about, what about like carpal tunnel? Is it possible? Well, it's possible because, you know, TMD problem can cause, uh, you know, pain going down the arm and a, and a tingling feeling in the fingers. And that can be confused with carpal, carpal tunnel syndrome. So the thing to do is, is get the, when you irritate the nervous system, all kinds of things go on. I had patients who had problems with their stomach. And they went to this gastro, they went to all these specialists, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. I put their jaw in the right position, their stomach problems went away. Because the, ir the, the system is so irritated by, by uh, the nervous system is so irritated by the jaw being in the wrong position that it just affects the whole body. Okay, I, I, I interviewed somebody and I talked to them, a, a patient, it was of someone else's, and she said to me, point blank, she said, somebody told me about this, and I almost didn't go, I made an appointment, I wasn't gonna go, I've seen 23 doctors, why, right. an, wh why another one? Right. right. Nobody can help me. And she went and saw a dentist that specialized in TMJ, and he happened to be, which is how I got to you, one of your students. Um, and I talked to her, and she said, I would never believe this. It's a miracle. It's only I can say it's, mm -hmm. it's a miracle. You know, for seven years of my life, I, I've just been in miserable pain. I've been horrible. Do you think, would you tell people, if, you have con if you're in pain, if it's been consistent, you can't get rid of it, to at least go get checked? At least go get checked, get the diagnosis. I go to a doctor, I go to a neurologist, I go to an ENT, I go to three gastrointestinal guys. Nobody finds anything wrong. I start to think it's... It's you. It's in my it's head. In head yeah. I'm gonna live with it the rest of my life. Right. Obviously, at some point, I'm gonna give up hope. I don't care what comes by, I'm not gonna try anything. There are all those people that will continue to try. Sure. Do you think that there are a, a number of people out there that suffer every day and don't need to? Yeah, in my opinion, 90% of the headaches are jaw related. Now it's not all jaw position. It could also be a number of patients clench and grind at night. If you're clenching and grinding every night, you're supposed to relax when you go to sleep. You're not supposed to do that. Then the muscles tense up and they wake what up are, with morning headaches. What are signs you clench? Because like somebody said to me, it's easy to know you clench if somebody's watching you, but what if you live by yourself? What's a good sign? How would I know that I clench at night? My teeth wear down? Your teeth wear My down. My jaw sore in the morning? Jaw sore in the morning and you wake up with headaches. A right. lot of people clench, Mike, a lot of people. And so we knock out the clenching problem by putting a special night appliance in. It's called an anterior deprogrammer. It makes it, it, it makes it so you only hit on your front teeth. You can't hit on your back teeth, so you can't clench. So a lot of my patients have clenching problems, so they have a night appliance to wear at night to prevent the clenching, and the appliance during the day to move the jaw forward to decompress the joint to take the pressure off the nerves and blood vessels, and they do well. The people that have been in pain for years. Yes, I remember one time, I was, I was just thinking this, that I had a patient came in, I eventually put a splint in for her, and I phoned her the next day and asked her how she was doing. The 401 is a, is a main highway that goes between Toronto and Detroit. And she said to me, 15 minutes on the 401 got rid of 15 years of pain. After she left your took office. Took 15 minutes for that to work. Now, now see, you... I'm not always that good, but Well, but day, you, I you have not <laughs> alluded to anything over, I've heard a month. Yeah. I've heard within four months, and now 15 minutes. Is it really, if it's going to work, is it really that quick? Oh, yeah, sometimes it's that quick. All right, I want to thank you for coming in. You've been it's very, it's been very important. It's a pleasure, important. Mike. Yeah, thank it's you. good. You've been watching Medical News Network. I'm Mike Wigenstein. For future information on this subject or any other, please visit our website at medicalnewsnetwork.info. Until next time, I wish you good health. The proceeding was a paid presentation for TMJ Therapy, brought to you by Dr. Brock Rondeau.